Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Will Faulkner and I'm a photographer based in Melbourne, Australia. On this channel, we talk about photography and how we as photographers can make better images. Um, I don't talk about gear at all, so if you are interested in gear, that's fine, but please click over to another channel. Now in today's video, I thought I'd take you through my most uh, recent street photographs that I've gathered uh, whilst walking around the city with a GoPro on my shoulder. It's about 10 or 15 photos and I'll take you through the thought process uh, that went into each photo and hopefully you'll get something out of it. Let's go. So here I am in Greville Street, Paran. This is uh, not far from where I live at the moment. And right now I'm typically chasing um, sort of artificial light, you know, neon lights, uh, shop lights, and just seeing what I can pull out of that. I'm not sort of going down the cyber, uh, neon uh, cyberpunk rabbit hole just yet although i do really enjoy that genre um, but i just i'm sort of playing with what i can what images i can create with artificial light street lights urban lights and i'm finding it enjoyable because um, particularly first thing in the morning uh, it, it's you can go out and you can create um, images if you stand there and you and you wait and you sort of you line up the light and then wait for a subject to enter the light. It can be quite good fun. Um, as I say, first thing in the morning is, is preferable to me because one, I wake up at 3 a.m., but two, um, there's no sort of, there's no crowds um, out there. So it's, it's, quite, um, it's quite enjoyable. You do have to wait a long time sometimes for the right image. Uh, you can see this one, I saw this man coming across with his dog and I've, I've whipped out the little point and shoot and I'm too far away so I, I zoom in and. I know it's going to be a crap image because I'm zoomed in and I shot this image but had I had a, a good camera with uh, decent low light performance I think that image would have come up really well. So here I am walking uh, through uh, Swanston Street in the city. This is pretty much the city square of our, of our city. Um, and right here on this particular day, I was chasing uh, geometry. I was really inspired by um, Henri Cartier Bresson, and you know, his his he often talks of how an image is basically composed of geometry of shapes. So um, I'm looking at the, the spiral staircase, looking at the lines, and just waiting for the man to to step on the stair right here, and then bam, get my image. Um, I really enjoy. Uh, that part of street photography where you can find the geometry and if you're patient enough if you wait there um, you'll, you'll end up um, having a subject walk into your frame and it's even more fun when you add another level to it like if you add um, uh, complementary color theory so for example um, you know if you're shooting at a green background you wait for a red subject to walk through which is you know the opposing colors the opposite colors on the color wheel which they call complementary color theory um, so if you combine geometry and color theory you, you can often come out with something that is really interesting and um, it'll get it'll get an unusually large public reaction even though people don't really understand why it's good they just they just feel that it's enjoyable because it has different layers multiple layers to it so I, I'm always chasing as many layers as I can I try to have you know color theory a geometry and emotion in, in an image but you know in street photography it's very hard to pull that off um, you've either got to get lucky or you've got to go out there for hours and hours and hours and hours and days and weeks to to try and find um, that that amount of levels in one photograph so it's really difficult at the moment in the city because of the latest wave that uh, the world is going through at the moment I won't mention the O word the O CO word or OC um, but I saw this green um, sort of teal green cafe here and I really liked the teal and I was waiting for you know the opposing color to walk through something something red or orange to walk through the, the scene and I, I hadn't sought permission from the cafe owner to shoot it so I'm sort of waiting there and I'm waiting there and I've, I'm shooting from the hip with with my uh, SLR at this point and I'm hoping she doesn't turn around and say what are you doing I'm waiting and waiting and eventually I just pulled off this frame it's not perfect I it's, it's missing emotion uh, but I'm 
happy with the colours that came out in that particular image. I saw this uh, yellow light, orange light, um, across the back of the cafe there and you know it's framed up, it's, it's perfectly framed by the, the building and it's an open shop front and I saw the pigeon there and I thought oh I wonder if I can get one of those fantastic images with the pigeon maybe on the, the white, just there as the pigeon's entering the white, you can see it there, the, the pavement. And I thought let's wait for the pigeon to be on that white pavement there and then the lady sitting on the chair to be sipping a latte and the man serving drinks to be waving to someone and you know it never it never works out that way I could have waited there all day but someone would have uh, approached me and given me a hard time which happens in street photography if you're not fast enough so I waited there but it's funny you know I'm standing there with my camera and people are walking right in front of me and I, and I was off to the side of the path and there's there's plenty of footpath behind me and it's amazing people are walking right in front of my lens uh, completely oblivious to uh, the fact that I'm standing there trying to frame up an image. This next uh, alleyway here, I, I always find myself going down this alleyway, it's part of my sort of uh, pattern that I go through in the city there and it's, it's, it's over photographed, I mean everyone in Melbourne they shoot it and because it's, it's, it's a tight alleyway, it's full of cafes and graffiti and checkerboard pavement and it, it photographs really well, you know, I, I, I try not to go down there and photograph it but I find myself always walking down hoping that I'll see it in a new light, see, see some doorway or alleyway that I have not seen before and I think that is an important part of street photography is to keep going back over and over and trying to see the same um, scenes in new light, in, 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 with new eyes. And on this particular day, um, I walked and I, and I got to the top here, and I usually stand behind this rubbish bin right here and frame up uh, the scene, so that that's pretty much the best way, best place to frame it. And I pulled out my camera and sort of just put my glasses on and framed up this shot with the two girls walking through, clicked focus and then bam. And it was one of those just really quick shots and I was quite happy with it, the way it came out. It's got, a, it's got the emotion level and the colours that I like and yeah, I was pretty happy with that shot. This next uh, composition is in Hosier Lane, it's our, our graffiti lane in Melbourne and I remember it before, it was really a touristy thing. I remember it when the council, the local council was still trying to clamp down on people doing graffiti there but now it's become really popular and the council is encouraging people to do street art and graffiti there and I saw this bored ape uh, image on the wall there and uh, I, I just had to take a photo of it. I think the whole bored ape thing is, is crazy. I know uh, a photographer this, this week made nearly a uh, million Australian dollars profit selling a bored ape that he bought for 400 US dollars, uh, sorry Australian dollars and sold for a million. So here you can see me uh, framing up a shot, I'm using myself as the model, I've got the camera on a, a 10 second timer, I walk into the frame and um, try and position it and I'll take multiple multiple shots and come back and preview each one on the viewfinder of the camera and just try and get it just right. I wasn't happy with that particular shot but here I am framing up the, the tattoo shot which I'll show, I showed you earlier and I'll show you again in a moment and coincidentally there's a man behind me um, just going absolutely ballistic he's wandering up and down the alley just behind me and he's ranting and screaming and kicking kicking boxes and stuff and I'm trying to cover the camera and look inconspicuous and hoping he doesn't spot me um, but that's part of the fun of uh, street photography at four o'clock in the morning um, you've just got to be careful I suppose I found this next composition uh, walking through Chinatown and it's a little bit touristy and I typically don't do these kind of shots but I found these red lanterns and I thought they looked good against the, the blue of the, uh, the sky, the overcast sky and the sort of, the, the, all the elements were coming together so I thought okay let's do one of these reflection shots that you see everyone doing on Instagram so here I am putting the camera down, uh, that's the beauty of having an L bracket on your camera, you can rest the camera on the L bracket and uh, I was able to pull off this shot. 
uh, interesting story pulling off that shot was as I was walking along with my tripod and my umbrella and my GoPro and everything, uh, I was looking at the light, looking at the light, and then I slipped on a pile of vomit. Uh, I managed to catch myself, but I was uh, skating along there for a moment. Um, yeah, but again, that's all part of the fun of urban street photography. So just before we wrap up, guys, I'll show you some photographers that are influencing me right now. This is Timus Photo from, uh, I think he's from Norway. He's a, a nice, uh, nice guy. I've chatted to him on uh, YouTube as well. And I really like his style. It's very similar to um, the path that I'm going down right now. So check out Timus, T-E-M-U-S photo. And then we have uh, Manaris. I'm sure you've all probably seen or heard of uh, Manaris. She has a style that is very cinema-like and she has a, an enormous following on social media. But I really like her color tones and she has definitely, definitely influenced me uh, of late. Um, this one I think she sold f as an NFT for quite a large amount as well. And finally we have uh, Noe Alonso which um, you'll find him on social media under Noe LZ, N-O-E-A-L-Z and uh, Noe's from Texas and he now lives in Seoul and uh, a big thank you to Noe as well for inviting me to Foundation and uh, he's a a genuinely nice bloke so check out Noe's YouTube channel and his photography as well he does a lot of ultraviolet work uh, sorry infrared work and um, and uh, cyber cyber style so um, he's fantastic so thanks for watching guys please like share and subscribe here's my baby son Tyler he is uh, <laughs> hello <laughs> he's waving look at that he's nine months old now and he's uh, a future photographer hopefully so yeah thanks see you in the next video bye